Now, for specifically for electric generating units and reasonably available control technology and, and rack them for electric generating units, the presumption in the rule is that if a state is meeting the clean air interstate rule SO2 cap through EGU reductions only, then the state may presume that its non-attainment area EGUs meet racked and rack them. The same policy goes for emissions of NOx from EGUs. As, as long as the EGU is uh, operating its selective catalytic reduction technology on a year-round basis and has a, a federally enforceable agreement to do so. The state may impose additional requirements on a specific plant if the state determines it is reasonable, it is a reasonable means to attain expeditiously. However, there are several factors that should be considered, and those are discussed in the preamble, and this would be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis through the SIP development process. Uh, states should be aware that they would have to respond to any public comments uh, on this issue at, at that time. For direct PM 2.5 emissions, um, RACT and RACM should be assessed for all EGUs. Now, the reasonable further progress provisions in the, in the subpart one of the Clean Air Act basically call for annual incremental reductions in emissions for the purposes of ensuring timely attainment. Uh, the RFP plan is due at the time that the attainment demonstration is due in 2008 with, with the, the full state implementation plan. If, the, if an area can show that it will attain within the first five years, meaning by April 2010, then reasonable further progress would be, would be shown by the attainment demonstration. But for areas with an attainment date extension beyond April of 2010, the state would need to establish emission reduction milestones showing generally linear progress from the base year of 2002 through the 2009 emissions year, and if appropriate, to the 2012 emissions year. That would be for areas with attainment dates that are furthest out in 2014 or 2015. So an RFP plan would basically show that for each pollutant that's covered in the attainment plan, such as SO2, NOx, and direct PM, it would show the, the rate of progress or where it would establish milestones for uh, that would be achieved in 2009 on the way to attainment for each of those pollutants. The geographic range of SO2 and NOx emission sources included in the RFP plan can extend uh, up to 200 kilometers beyond the non-attainment area boundary. Um, to do this, the state would need to demonstrate that um, all the sources are included within that outer distance and it would also have to provide a demonstration showing that sources from that outer distance do contribute to significantly to the non-attainment problem. Um, there is also in the area of progress reviews, there's a mid-course review that would be due in 2011 for any of the areas with an outer attainment date in the years 2014 or 2015. Uh, at this time, there would be uh, an evaluation of air quality progress, progress in implementing emission reduction strategies, and progress in terms of emission reductions. And if, um, if an area is off track, it should adopt new strategies as necessary. There's also a contingency measures provision in the rule. Um, contingency measures are to be implemented without any further action if an area fails to attain by its attainment date or fails to meet RFP requirements. Um, these need to be measures that are other than those required for attainment or to meet RFP. And the level of reductions, the, the uh, guidance in the preamble is that those reductions should be about one year's worth of reductions needed for attainment. This is, uh, this is not regulatory language, this is in the, in the preamble. Uh, the, the package also includes a significant section about condensable particulate matter. Uh, PM is comprised of filterable and condensable emissions, and, 
And condensable emissions are those that are in a, a gaseous or a liquid form when they're going, when they're being emitted from a stack, for example. When they hit um, ambient air, they, they cool rapidly and condense to a uh, particle form. Uh, typically, these are sources with, um, with high temperature combustion, such as uh, electric utilities, steel mills, and pulp mills. Uh, for many years, emission inventories have been required to include condensable PM, and test methods for condensable PM have been available but there have been some concerns about data uncertainties and the, avail the ability to develop enforceable emission limits in these 2008 SIPs in a very short period of time. So for this reason, the rule has got a transition period uh, which calls for sources to be included, um, sources with condensable emissions uh, to be included for any state implementation plan revisions that are required after January 2011. These would include revisions of the, of the plan for mid-course review and also for implementing the 24-hour standard. Um, during this, this period of time, um, we are encouraging states that have been conducting emission testing for condensables and establishing emission limits for condensable PM to continue to do so. And we, we have uh, significant guidance on our websites for these test methods. But we are also updating method 201A and 202 for use by the states um, as this transition period uh, continues. And at the same time, stakeholder groups are conducting testing uh, with these methods to be able to update emission factors. And this is a, a, an area where we are looking for significant improvement in PM emission factors. Um, finally, we are also working with uh, ASTM to finalize a dilution-based test method. And all of, these, all of these practices would help to enhance databases to support regulations. The final rule includes sections on a number of other issues that we're not going to get into today. These include improved source monitoring, transportation conformity, general conformity, emission inventories, enforcement and compliance, and the proposal included a section on new source review for PM 2.5. That is being finalized in a separate rulemaking which we believe will be finalized in the fall of 2007. In his next presentation, Rich will discuss different types of non-attainment areas and the process for determining the most expeditious attainment date. In the last presentation, we talked about the PM implementation rule being developed under the subpart one provisions of the Clean Air Act. Um, in, in under this provision, the states are to define what the attainment, the most appropriate attainment date is based upon the reasonable measures that can be, attain, that can be implemented um, by a specific date. And so this presentation will talk about uh, looking at different types of non-attainment areas and the different kinds of analyses that you would need to go through to define your attainment date for your particular area. So we're going to talk about five kinds of areas, um, areas that have clean data achieved already before the SIP submittal date of April 2008. We're going to talk about areas that could show attainment by April 2010 with no new local measures, just basically national measures and, and, and other state adopted measures. Uh, areas that could achieve attainment by April 2010 with local measures as well as national measures. Areas that, that cannot attain by April 2010 but would need an extension and would need to go out uh, between 2010 and 2013. And then finally, those areas that need an attainment date uh, the furthest out in 2014 or 2015. So for areas that can achieve, achieve clean data, uh, basically uh, three years of data uh, that, that is attaining the standard, before April of 2008. This would be essentially covered by the clean data 
requirements in the fine particle implementation rule. So in, under this situation, the requirements for an attainment demonstration and its related elements, uh, reasonable further progress and contingency measures all would be suspended if that area could show that it has clean data prior to the SIP submittal date. Um, the area would be required to continue to implement the new source review program and to continue implementation of the transportation and general conformity programs, however. Um, and if the area fell back into non-attainment after this point, the suspended requirements would come back into force and, they, and an attainment demonstration would need to be developed. Now for the next few slides, we're going to be looking at um, uh, some flowcharts. And I want to make clear some terminology that we use in these flowcharts. Uh, we talk about attainment date and we talk about the emissions year for modeling. And essentially, um, uh, designations that were finalized in April of 2005 so the attainment date should be five years from that point, uh, let's say April of 2010. So to show attainment by April of 2010, what we are saying is that the, the state should model the 2009 emissions year. And in that, that is the year that the area must achieve clean data. So we're going to be uh, use, referring to the attainment date and the emissions year in these following slides. So this is an area that can attain by April 2010 with no new measures. Essentially, um, starting in the upper left corner in the orange, orange box, uh, the area would model a 2009 base case. And by base case, what we mean are uh, all of the different emission reductions that are in the pipeline and, and will be uh, achieved under, under national and regional programs such as the Clean Air Interstate Rule, Mobile Source Rules, and then, some, and then whatever state programs are in place. So if with that modeling demonstration uh, the area can show that it would attain by April of 2010, we then move to the right and we look at the blue box and um, the issue there is then could, could attainment one year earlier be achieved? And the analysis would need to then look at what candidate measures are available that could be implemented throughout the course of 2008. Now, we recognize that these SIPs are coming in in April of 2008. There may be a limited set of measures that could be implemented throughout the course of 2008. So, this analysis uh, can be somewhat qualitative in terms of uh, identifying those measures that, that are available, but there may be some uh, measures that could be implemented quickly during that initial year. Uh, if there are such measures available, then uh, that could accelerate the, the attainment date by a year. Then we, we follow the, uh, the yes, and we, we see that the attainment date should be April of 2009. And, and when I just want to be clear that when we mention con candidate measures, um, candidate measures are those that, uh, that would allow you to achieve the most expeditious attainment date. And those are basically all technically and economically feasible reductions available from sources in the non-attainment area, uh, essentially reasonably available control measures and reasonably available control technology. And Tim Smith will speak in greater detail about those in the following presentation. Uh, and it also includes other intrastate measures, other measures that could be implemented outside the non-attainment area but within the state's jurisdiction that could also uh, expedite the attainment date. Now if the area with this initial analysis cannot attain by April of 2010, then they would need to uh, look at uh, what additional measures um, could be implemented by uh, through the emissions year of 2009. So we go to the next slide and this is essentially a, a control case modeling run for 2009 um, where those candidate measures would be evaluated uh, on top of the national and regional measures that are available. 
and, um, and we would move to the right to the blue box and see if the area could attain uh, by one year earlier based uh, upon those candidate measures. Um, if, they're, if they're able to attain by April 2009 with some additional local measures, uh, then that would be the attainment date. And, and if not, um, and, and the area could show that it would attain by 2010, but not 2009, then, then April 2010 would be the attainment date. Now in the event, this is an important analysis because in the event that the state is not able to show that with all available measures that it, it could attain by April 2010, we then move over to the yellow box um, which says uh, the area would need an extension. And um, I think the, uh, the analytical burden goes up when an area is, is to need an extension. So um, we'll go to the next slide. Areas needing an extension do not automatically uh, have a, a 2015 attainment date. There's further analysis to see how long that extension should be. It should range from, from one to five years, and it should be the earliest year. Um, and it's at this point that a more rigorous analysis of available measures should be done. Um, so essentially we're looking at modeling future years beyond uh, 2009 as we were talking about in previous slides. We're recommending that the state start with 2012. Uh, however, in some cases where the, the problem is um, that the design value for the area is uh, much higher than, than other areas, um, it may be able to start with a, an outer year as the initial modeling year, such as 2014 or 2015. So in this, this is the um, scenario where an area could, uh, could show attainment somewhere in the time frame of 2011 to 2013. So in, in this case, we'd start in the orange box, and the area would um, model 2012 with all candidate measures that could be implemented through that year. And it's, a, it's important to be able to identify what measures exactly could be implemented by that time frame for this analysis. Um, moving, to the, moving to the right, uh, if the area can show that attainment could be achieved with all candidate measures, um, then you're looking at, well, should the attainment date be 2012 or possibly 2011? Um, and in that case, there could be some additional um, interpolation uh, done. We're not, we're not requiring that the 2011 year needs to be mo modeled in this case as well, but there could be some, uh, some judgment by looking at emission inventories as to whether attainment could be achieved in 2011. So if that is possible, then the attainment date would be 2011 or 2012. Um, if if uh, you, you could not advance the attainment date um, from the 2012 uh, emissions year, then the attainment date would be April of 2013. Um, for an area that does show this, they would be receiving an extension and the uh, RFP plan that comes in at the time of SIP submittal would need to include a plan for, um, for, for showing reasonable further progress for the 2009 emissions year. Now if the area is not able to show attainment um, by April of 2013 in this analysis, then we move down to the yellow box for uh, areas that need an extension to 2014 or 2015. So when we look at this last of the four flow charts, um, the, the state or the local agency would model 2014 with all candidate measures that could be implemented. These measures would be, again, identified as RACT and RACM plus other interstate measures that are available. And uh, again, Tim, Tim's presentation goes into more detail on that. Um, if the area is able to show that it could attain by April of 2015, then 
then you move over to this to the blue box showing that um, at that point determining what is the appropriate year 2014 or 2015 as as the attainment year that again that would be based upon looking at the um, the model output and the emissions assumptions that were included for the the 2009 2012 and 2014 modeling runs so if, if it's determined by the state that uh, the attainment could be basically um, on the emissions year of 2013, then um, attainment, the attainment date would be 2014, April 2014. Um, if not, then the attainment date would be April of 2015. In this case, the um, the area would have an RFP plan for 2009 and also for the 2012 emissions year. And um, if the area is not able to show uh, attainment by April 2015, um, then that is of significant concern. Um, the, key, the Clean Air Act for subpart one areas requires attainment no later than 2015, and really um, an, an approvable plan is needed at that point. So that, that concludes this presentation on how to establish your attainment date.